as a young citizen of India, armed with technology, knowledge and love for my nation, with a vision of transforming India into a developed nation, I am joining Shobhith University. What about you? Very good morning to all the participants from India and abroad. Soviet Institute of Engineering and Technology Meerut deemed to be university and its centers of excellence, Center for Informatics Development Solutions and Applications and Center for Industry 4.0 Technology Studies and Applications in association with African Asian Rural Development Organization, Ardo New Delhi, Organize this weekly international webinar series on open source digital technologies towards self-reliant India. Atmanirbar Bharat. Today is the 72nd edition of the webinar series. 23rd April 19, 23rd April 2022. Every week on Saturday, this is this program starts at 11:30 a.m and ends at 1 p.m. Indian Standard Time. On behalf of the Honorable Chancellor, His Excellency, the Secretary General Ardo, Honorable Vice Chancellor, the faculty members of the university, and on my behalf, and as Professor Emeritus and Chairman of the Centers of Excellence, Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Governance Research Studies, Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies, Center for Informatics Development Solutions and Applications, Center for Industry 4.0 Technology Studies and Applications, and Center for Health Informatics and Computing. Let me welcome our guest speaker of the today's webinar, Mr. Benjamin Raja. He is an innovator and a very successful serial you know, entrepreneur and founder of Farm Again. It is not form is form again and another very important thing which i noticed is that harvest the unharvested you know it is a it's a slogan like our honorable prime minister said it that local vocal for local vocal for local to make it global so he said you know our benjamin raja says that harvest the unharvested and I wish to inform the participants and the guest speaker that under this international webinar series, these two centers of excellence, namely Center for Informatics Development Solutions and Applications and Center for Industry 4.0 Technology Studies and Applications have organized 71 lectures so far in the areas of open technologies to provision simple and economical IT infrastructure is very important. A roadmap for students using free and open source software and reaching goals of Atma Nirbar Bharat. Open source software in industrial IoT for SMEs. Free and open source adoption and business models. Open data platform for smart digital government. Technology imperatives make in India for self-reliance. Edge artificial intelligence. Data governance for self-reliant India. Digital India transforming governance and society. India's email service, citizen at indiamail.com in 22 constitutionally recognized languages. Ecosystem architecture for digital transformation. Education system, cyber critical infrastructure, seizing opportunities in open innovation, and value creation network in the digital world for self reliant economy. This topic is very important. This was delivered by Dr. Jababali Vinanchi Arachi, former principal advisor to the Director General, Unido Vienna, on 5th December 2020. Ensuring food safety and compliance through technology. Digital India, urgent need for semiconductor manufacturing in India. Technology investment in agriculture value chain. Role of foreign direct investment by Dr. Dharendra Kumar, 
former executive director world bank and an i you know and a former chairman competitive commission of india government you know india and entrepreneurship and skill development ai design pathways for skill development rise up platform economy revisiting value chain governance it's very important era of automation industrial robotics and industry 4.0 indo german perspective of technology transfer skill gap analysis and opportunities role of artificial intelligence in healthcare current developments in diagnosis and vaccine research digital agri tech and agri startup perspective health informatics network value chain a e health system and beyond leveraging emerging technologies for ensuring transparent and traceable agri and food supply chain unleash the power of citizen development for enterprise software development e governance models towards sustained quality service to citizens backed by technology indian msmes to adopt industry 4.0 technology capabilities urgent need for mentorship and accelerator program building public digital platform using microservices and apis health informatics network value chain early childhood and development and the learning health informatics network value chain clinical ai interface between machine learning and health informatics health informatics network value chain importance of social medicine and community health in the times of health emergency gravity filter simple low cost solution to the drinking water treatment in rural india open source govtech startups empowering growth with automation digital transformation in small enterprises and small businesses of india challenges and opportunities by mr r k jayabalan founder and ceo consortri madurai national digital twin program need for a robust geospatial infrastructure industry 4.0 in msme benefits of indigenously developed collapcad software from national informatics center mass serialization and anti counterfeiting solutions to fight illicit trade by an young entrepreneur mr johnny samuel young entrepreneur and founder of zivo razlan a b2b startup cyber security risk challenges and solutions intelligence approach to reduce cyber risk new internet ipv6 root server toward atmanirbhar connected bharat indian startups reflections and possible policy interventions needed for scaling up to gram panchayat blockchain and crypto for a digital assets platform pathways for global trade robot as a service leverage technology to solve enterprise challenges space startups connecting to international markets with emerging business models enabling technologies for future vision vivekananda secondary education and skills development mega project its potential impact on rural entrepreneurship and the rural economy in india sports grail a digital sports media platform and prospects of indian sports industry sustainability model at a global level pharma 4.0 industry 4.0 applications to pharmaceutical manufacturing path to a digital transformation by dr pramod kumar rajput from kairila pharmaceutical limited gujarat accelerate and scale non linear growth through partner ecosystem technological renaissance and the human capital a perspective health informatics network value chain medical outreach challenges versus potential by mr rajendra kakarla vesanam he is working in nilagiri forest beyond covid 19 revitalizing micro <coughs> and small enterprises society 5.0 a new society beyond industry 4.0 and post covid 19 smart village community african ict oblique iot lessons
டிஜிட்டல் எக்கானமி வேஸ் அண்ட் மீன்ஸ் டு ப்ரொடெக்ட் அண்ட் எம்பவர் ஃபார் செல்ஃப் ரிலையன்ஸ் ப்ராஜெக்ட் வேஸ் அண்ட் மீன்ஸ் டு ப்ரொடெக்ட் எம்பவர் ஃபார் செல்ஃப் ரிலையன்ஸ் project management essentials launch pad for future ceos and startup founders beyond Pragr- pragmatic ways for atmanirbhar bharat democratization of essential services by using sustainable energy as a catalyst transforming india through relevant education and vocational training digital technology in simplifying citizen life online learning during the pandemic and its future smart microeconomic zone pathway for self reliance at village level atmanirbhar village smart microeconomic <coughs> sorry <coughs> smart microeconomic zones pathway for self reliance at village level crime prediction support system knowledge management for development partnership to achieve the sustainable development goals of un and implementing the agenda 2030 millet value chain from iot to blockchain a traceability road map aspirational district programs in left wing extremism affected district a successful model of data driven governance digital agriculture supply chain and trading hub a geo economic perspective market driven agriculture need for a development of crop specific strategies at block level a open agri net network to unlock a trillion dollar plus potential of indian agriculture with a small holder farmer by mr anil kumar founder and group ceo sam unathi developing rural entrepreneurship to ensure doubling of farmers income leveraging the power of convergence through connecting dots agriculture start agri startups agri entrepreneur and rural innovators by mr sanjeev rohila ceo nabard foundation nap foundation today is the 72nd edition of this very important webinar series we will have the talk by our guest speaker mr benjamin raja founder farm again harvest the unharvested Coimbatore, state of Tamil Nadu, on a very important topic, agronomy plus AI, agronomy plus AI, artificial intelligence, you know, facilitates precision farming. Three important keywords, agronomy, artificial intelligence, and precision farming. Atma Nirvar Bharat is the road ahead, is the vision of our Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, of making india a self reliant nation rested on five i's intent investment inclusion infrastructure and innovation based on five pillars namely quantum jump not incremental economy quantum jump in economy infrastructure one that represents modern india system 21st century technology driven vibrant demography and demand whereby the strength of our demand and supply chain should be utilized to full capacity five eyes and five pillars is is uh, is atmanirbhar bharat and atmanirbhar bharat in agriculture you know is the third drench of atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan the government of india has announced 1.5 lakh crore booster for the agriculture sector which includes 1 lakh crore to agricultural cooperative societies farm producer organization and startups to for boosting farm gate infrastructure 10000 crores for formalization of micro food enterprises and for following cluster based farming approach vocal for local to make it global is is a clarion call given by our honorable prime minister agriculture sector is the foundation of you know indian economy in order to facilitate the university also conduct a national webinar series on doubling farmers income by 2022 on every thursday at 11 am and we have so far conduct, uh, conducted about 74 editions on various topics 
and those who are interested they can visit the soviet university website and see all the talks which are available india lives in villages acharya vinoba bhave said india is a largely an agri- agricultural country krishi pradhan desh and a country of villages of more than 6.25 lakh villages gram pradhan desh is the foundation of indian economy and it largely is uh, india is largely an agricultural country and employs more than 50% of india's workforce and contributes almost 19% of its gdp and climate change has both at present agricultural livelihoods are being severely impacted world over as a result of anthropogenic global warming and climate change indian labor intensive and subsistence based agriculture is particularly vulnerable to this development farmers of india are facing multi dimensional problems price fluctuation debt and lack of infrastructure and weather advisory systems at the farm level indian farming community comprises of about 14.5 crores operational holders out of which 85% are small and marginal farm uh, operational holders 85% farmers needs timely location specific and personalized information for effective control on their production risk and then market their produce to identified market opportunities many national level programs digital india 2015 make in india 2015 skill india 2015 startup india 2015 stand up india 2015 have faced operational difficulties for its impact at farm level and farmer level that to at small and marginal farmers because the op- block level agriculture offices block level fisheries offices block level rural development offices block level <coughs> veterinary offices block level agriculture bank of op- uh, offices and they don't look into you know very important schemes for operationalization at the grassroots level india is an agrarian economy and this schemes should have seen the last man that is a farmer but they all stops at the district level honorable prime minister said in his independence day address on 15th august 2021 he said in the coming years we will have to increase the power, collective power of small farmers of the country we have to give them new facilities they must to become the country's pride on 28th february 2016 he said india cannot of in you know 20th february 2016 while addressing a farmers rally in uttar pradesh at bareilly he, the prime, honorable prime minister said my dream is to see farmers double their income by 2022 when the country completes 75 years of its independence on 16th april 2022 honorable prime minister said india cannot afford to remain stagnant at this juncture and it has to be self reliant and if the people use local goods for the next 25 years the country will not have to face the issue of unemployment as recent as it is on 16th april 2022 reforms towards digitalization of agricultural reforms i would like to quote the doubling farmers income by 2022 report submitted to the government on 2000 in 2018 i was associated as the group leader for two volumes volume 13 and volume 12b volume 11 and volume 12b volume 11 talks about empowering the farmers through agriculture extension and knowledge dissemination and volume 12b talks about digital technology in agriculture that's where today's topic is very important this report has been accepted by the government of india and grassroots level block level offices don't want to understand and it has got five seven mission mode programs it talks about digitalized agriculture digital technology 
and innovation in agriculture. Digital India, Make in India, Skill India and Startup India programs for transformational reforms in agriculture sector through smart irrigated farming, smart tribal, tribal farming and smart rainfed farming. Digitalized agrometer advisories and agricultural risk management solutions. Open insurance ecosystem is essential. Digitalized agricultural resources information system and micro level planning at village level to facilitate smart farming and smart village. Digitalized value chain for about 400, 400 agriculture commodities. Digitalized access to inputs, technology, knowledge, skill, agricultural finance, credit, marketing, and agribusiness management to farmers. And digitalized integrated land and water management systems per drop more crop and digitalized farm health management for reduction of farmers loss this is very important in view of the covid situation integrated farmers health integrated you know farmers health plant health animal health soil health water health and fish health and environmental health is very important it is a trillion dollar data economy if the data is seen through GIS technology on a specific location at the village level, you know, this can generate, you know, trillion dollar economy. These data are lying on vertical silos and no institution is in a position to see as the location specific. Doubling farmers income by 2022 report in its volume also talks about there is a need for networking of all agricultural cooperative societies, CoopNet. And also, each cooperative society is to be computerized, digitalized, e-cooperatives. It's the need of the world. We got one lakh primary agriculture cooperative societies in the country and about 22,000 primary fisher cooperative societies. And this is very important that this one lakh 22,000 primary cooperative societies to be networked and digitalized. Digital India program. Is, is aims of India aims to you know convert India into a knowledge based economy and a digitally powered society and platform economy is rising and we need to have a digital ecosystem you know for a digital transformation in the country and important technologies are AI, 5G, IoT, serverless computing, biometrics, artificial you know augmented reality virtual reality, blockchain, robotics, natural language processing, and quantum computing. We have an ecosystem. We have, you know, doubling farmers income by 2022. We have so many national level schemes. Digital India 2015, Make in India 2015, Skill India 2015, Stand Up India 2015, Atma Nirbar Bharat 2020, and Mission 2022. And, and various other, you know, you know, uh, you know, things to be achieved is agriculture 4.0. And German has given industry 4.0. We have got 63 million small-scale industries. They need to be digitalized through industry 4.0. Government of India announced industry 4.0, but many of the state governments have not even taken any first step to digitalize small-scale industries in their respective states. And Society 5.0, Japan has given it. And India needs to give agriculture 4.0 to the whole world. And India has gotten you know, another strategic plan for the next 25 years. India at 75 and India at 100. It is called Amrit Kaal, led up to India at 100. And with the four priorities, PM, Kadi Shakti, all you know silos have to be networked and inclusive development and productivity enhancement and investment sunrise opportunities energy transition and climate action and financing of investment we have sustainable development goals 17 and you know <clears throat> and the targets 169 this is facilitating the future we want Leveraging the power of convergence through connecting the dots 
agri startups agri entrepreneurs and rural innovators growth of agri tech startups in india i would like to quote that from 43 startups in 2013 it has now come to more than 1000 startups in 2022 in agriculture sector given by rising in rural internet penetration rise in post harvest and supply chain losses a growing number of investors interest in this sector from 30, 43 startups in 2013 to 1000 startup but this university is is propagating that we india has got about 2.25 lakh gram panchayat we need to have 2.25 lakh agri tech startups to facilitate one in each gram panchayat to facilitate 14.5 crores operational holders agri uh, agripreneurs is defined as an agripreneur whose main business is agriculture and agriculture related activities agriculture plus entrepreneur rural innovators india needs rural innovation for boosting economy we have agri clinics and agri business centers but you know that it is yet to reach at the grassroots level 2.25 lakh gram panchayat level the agri clinics and agri business centers have to reach agronomy and agronomy plus ai is precision farming today's topic as as a as an informatics scientists as a hardcore technocrat spent more than 40 years in operationalizing visualizing you know e governance programs informatics development from bottom up process i was the project director in 1987 to uh, you know computerize 512 district under a program called district information system disnic of in nic which considered visualized 28 sectoral database programs agriculture animal husbandry fisheries are for three among the 28 and if this database would have been operationalized today with the ai with the blockchain with the big data analytics you know the development plans would have been much better today we have to do with the statistics and today is is very important agronomy for the benefits of the participants agronomy has been derived from the greek derivatives agros and nomos which respectively mean field and management field management farm management agronomy and i would like to quote two important document one is sankam age literature another one is that you know this is a fourth century literature fourth century literature is krishi parasha is a text of ancient agriculture in sanskrit which paid great attention to the management of agriculture during the sangam age 500 bce to 300 ce agriculture was the main occupation of the tamils among the five geographical divisions of the tamil country in sangam literature the marudam region was the most fit for cultivation as it had the most fertile land two literatures of the sangam period Tolkapiyam and the Thirukkural give us a vivid picture of agriculture practices in that period. So it is from 500 BC to 300 CE. You know that you know we see that two important, three important documents: Krishi Parashar and the Tolkapiyam and Thirukkural talk about agricultural professions in the country. Agronomy is a science and technology of producing. and using plants by agriculture for food fuel fiber chemicals recreation or land conservation as agri agronomy has come to include research of plant genetics plant physiology meteorology and soil science relation of agronomy to other science soil science agricultural chemistry crop physiology plant ecology biochemistry and economics it is the application of combination of sciences such as biology chemistry economics ecology earth sciences and genetics professionals of agronomy are termed as agronomists agriculture is a science and art of farming and agronomy is a science and art of 
field crop production by the proper utilization of natural resources it presents agriculture from an integrated it presents agriculture from an integrated holistic perspective according to american society of agronomy 2014 it deals with pr principles practices of soil water and crop management deals with principles uh, practices of soil water and crop management it deals with the methods which provide favorable en environment to the crop for higher productivity with the efficient use of soil fertility water laborer and other factors of production related to crop production amazon launches in agronomy services for indian farmers according to the news report on 2nd september 2021 amazon retail the indian e grocery business of us tech giant amazon has started offering digital agronomy services to farmers in the country the business standards reports the platform provides crop plants aimed at improving yields and quality pests and disease alerts and farm management software that can be accessed via mobile app as well as a team of agronomists who can give more comprehensive advice to the farmers amazon also said that it is building a robust temperature controlled supply chain infrastructure to preserve the quality of farm produce and reduce food waste facebook and reliance geo has had a deal during 2020 wherein facebook invested 5.7 billion dollars in mobile network carrier reliance geo with the digitalization of indian agriculture sector this is the motivation of facebook will digital tools replace the field of agronomists we needed to collect data and be able to organize it in layers satellite images irrigation and fertilization data irrigation and fertilization data yield maps once we have enough data and we can start seeing patterns artificial intelligence will prevail artificial intelligence will bring value to the farmers according to mr ram leasay head of professional services agronomy department of netafim the future economist will be connected to the field will be a big data advisor master of digital tools source of knowledge and an enabler first to test and implement new technologies harness artificial intelligence machine language learning to help the farmers predict and plan agriculture is one of the most fertile industries that are for ai in machine learning another report says 10 ways artificial intelligence has the potential to improve agriculture this is an article was published in 2021 ai machine learning and iot sensors that provide real time data for algorithms for you know this data this sensors provide real time data for algorithms which will increase agricultural efficiency improve crop yields and reduce food production costs according to the united nations prediction on population and hunger the world's population will increase by 2 billion by 2050 requiring 60 percent of the food in increase in food productivity to feed them artificial intelligence and machine learning are already showing the potential to help close the gap in anticipated you know food needs for an additional 2 billion people worldwide by 2050 and the 10 ways are using ai and machine learning based surveillance system to monitor every crop fields real time video feeds identifies animal or human breaches sending an alert immediately ai machine learning improve crop yields production uh, prediction yield mapping the un international agencies and large scale agriculture operations are pioneering drone data combined with in ground sensors to improve pest management there is a shortage of agricultural workers making ai in machine learning based smart tractors agri bots and robotics a viable option for many remote agriculture operations that struggle to find workers optimize the right mix of biodegradable pesticides 
and limiting their application to only the field areas that need to need a treatment to reduce cost while increasing the yield is one of the most common uses of AI and machine learning in agriculture, price forecasting, and finding irrigation leaks, optimizing irrigation systems, measuring how effective frequent crop irrigation system improve yield areas are all areas AI contributes to improve farming efficiencies, monitoring livestock health, and I can say integrated farm health management, farmer health, farm health, you know, plant health, animal health, soil health, water health, fish health, and so on and so forth. Precision agriculture is the management strategy that gathers, processes, and analyzes temporal, spatial, and individual data and combines it with other information to support management decision according to estimated variability for improved resource use efficiency, productivity, quality, profitability, and sustainability of agricultural production. Precision agriculture is a farming management concept based on observing, measuring, and responding to inter and intra field variability in crops. Precision agriculture is a key component of the third wave of modern agriculture revolution, others being mechanized agriculture, 1900 to 1930. During that period, each farmer was able to feed 26 people. And during the Green Revolution, 1960s, through genetic modification, each farmer was able to feed 156 people from 26 to 156 people. Now, various published documents say that with the technological advancement in the agricultural revolution of precision farming by 2050, each farmer will be able to feed 265 on the same acreage. From 1930 per acre gave 26 farmer was able to feed only 26 members and 1960 green revolution provided on per acre 156 eight times and then by 2050 with the precision farming it is phenomenal 265 people and on the same acreage and crop management and soil management and digital technology leads to a digitalized farm management that is today's topic agronomy plus ai is equal to precision farming. Empowered solutions for precision farming is we can see from mission, smart mission, connected mission, and smart missions, that is agricultural machinery systems, and now it is a farm management systems, be it weather data management, be it soil, you know, seed control man optimization, irrigation management, and soil data management, and crop protection, crop control optimization, and so on and so forth. From simple mission, now it is the farm management systems. And digitalization of agriculture in India, you know, an application of IoT, robotics, and informatics to establish farm extension 4.0. This is my article, which is published in 2020, you know, in the Journal of Informatics and Innovative Technology, which talks about that Agriculture data has become a major source of competitive advantage. The future of agriculture technology includes IoT, big data analytics, smart farming, having potential impact on agricultural resource management, agricultural value system through farm extension delivery mechanism. Achieving farm extension at the village level leads to development of smart farmer, smart farming, and smart village in an agriculture ecosystem leading to the economy and hence leading to a national open digital ecosystem in the country. India is an agrarian economy and hence requires to be a digitalized agricultural economy. Researchers look into artificial intelligence, drones and robotics to help agronomists prepare for this future. What is this future? As drought and desertification shrink the world acreage per capita of arable land and the world population balloons to 9.7 billion by 2050. This is the future. So everybody is looking towards agronomists. And we are now looking towards today's topic, agronomy plus AI toward, uh, towards precision farming. Predictive digital twin framework is necessary. Predictive digital twin framework. And you know, lab and the field. 
lab to field and field to lab it is the digital twine framework this is where artificial intelligence blockchain and big data analytics will facilitate very important let us now turn to the address of our guest speaker mr benjamin raja founder farm again harvest the unharvested you know from coimbatore to talk on the topic agronomy plus ai equal to precision farming a powerful combination of agronomy expertise with artificial intelligence enables any farmer to adopt and succeed with precision agriculture practices this sentence i took it from their website farmagain.in this topic will motivate and galvanize the participants watching over telecast through facebook.com oblix soviet university india or youtube.com oblix soviet university in or linkedin.com oblix company oblix soviet dash university for motivating them to get inspired to work through startups at gram panchayat level based on form again dot in model 2.25 lakh agri tech startups in india indian farming community comprises of about 14.5 crores operational holdings out of which 85% farmers have small and marginal operational holdings smart irrigated farming smart rainfed farming smart tribal farming and smart hill farming smart hill farming our guest speaker will discuss on farm again differentiation and go grow strong autonomous farm an award winning autonomous irrigation fertilization climate management product solution during his address precision agriculture is the future farm again is working towards making precision agriculture a reality by bringing in deep domain expertise in agro agronomy and advanced technologies like iot and artificial intelligence to solve challenges faced in farming and make a farmer productive and profitable i would like to tell i would like to convey to the participants their vision and mission vision is to become a, the leader in precision agriculture and make every farmer a successful micro entrepreneur 14.5 crore you know farmers to become a micro entrepreneur this is their vision and mission is transform agriculture with the state of the art technology and make farming intelligent sustainable and profitable so let me introduce our guest speaker to the participants mr manish can you put the profile benjamin raja founder farm again harvest the unharvested coimbatore state of tamil nadu mr benjamin raja has worked as a senior management executive in leading corporate such as hanival with a post graduate degree in computer science and profound insight in research and development mr benjamin worked in us france and india for a span of 20 years despite his apex corporate roles mr benjamin opted to retire young with an intention and obsession to contribute to the indian society his passion to agriculture and sustainability has been an impetus for him to explore innovation in precision farming using machine learning artificial intelligence and iot mr benjamin applied smart engineering practices and strategies integrated with lean principles to achieve faster to market solutions faster to market solutions his innovation in the precision agriculture space is revolutionary and can bring down water and fertilizer usage substantially while achieving very high yields his precision farming solution grotron has backed many awards both in india and abroad with all these substantial handouts mr benjamin is triggering organic growth engine in the agriculture space backbone of the nation with various precious and technologies with this i would like to invite mr benjamin raja founder farm again to talk in the international webinar series on open source digital technologies for self reliant india atmanirbhar bharat on the topic agronomy plus ai equal to precision farming over to you mr benjamin raja thank you thank you professor uh, thank you for the beautiful introduction uh, so i'll quickly share my screen and then <coughs>
Ok. Ups. Ok. So... <clears throat> So good morning to all the participants. Uh, uh, so I would like to give a quick background about myself and uh, uh, the company. Uh, so like like what uh, Professor uh, introduced, I used to work for Honeywell and uh, uh, I had a passion towards uh, technology in any field. Uh, uh, I was deeply into uh, industrial automation and aerospace research. Therefore, any information that I get on science used to uh, attract me. And in that sense, um, my readings and my exposure about agriculture, although I was uh, uh, <clears throat> I had not studied agriculture, I had not uh, been part of agriculture uh, myself. Um, but then when you, when you uh, hear about a uh, lot of achievements, accomplishments in agriculture from across the world, like for example, uh, you know, uh, 200 tons of uh, tomato you hear from Israel, um, and similarly from the Mother Netherlands. And when you when you talk about uh, the same productivity back in India, when people tell you it is about 10 tons on an average, then uh, you know there is something that uh, uh, as a as a person who was involved in research uh, and development, that certainly triggered um, uh, you know a thought in my mind, and. As a result of that, in 2013, I left my corporate job and uh, uh, came into agriculture. And the reason we coined the name Farm Again was when, when I studied Indian agriculture, I felt that there is a need to look at farming from a different perspective, which is why the name Farm Again was coined. And harvest, the unharvested is a tagline. And unharvested, as you may know, is an incorrect English word. It was just coined to... Um, uh, spread the message that there is a lot that we can harvest more than what we do today and there are ways and means of doing it which we need to be conscious of and uh, uh, try to harvest what has not been harvested so that that is the introduction so today's topic is agronomy plus artificial intelligence um, supports precision farming uh, so Crotron is our uh, patented and uh, 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 technology platform, which helps in autonomous precision farming. So today we will talk about agronomy as a vertical, artificial intelligence and machine learning as a vertical, IoT as a vertical, and how all these culminate into precision farming. So on one hand, we have science, uh, agriculture science, and on the other hand, we have technology. And the fine mix of science and technologies uh, to give a solution to a challenge that is uh, that we face in agriculture finally results in a very fine uh, and absolute precision farming. So to quickly talk about what is smart farming, uh, anything smart has to have some data behind it. And the way we collect the data has to be systematic in, way, in some way or the other. And once we have some data, the data should be used and we should be in a position to uh, make some predictions and similarly with the data that uh, we should be in a position to make some analysis and take cor corrective actions which in turn feeds into some sort of a continuous imp improvement model and if we have this cycle in farming we can call that farming as smart farming now rotron is essentially precision farming plus smart farming plus iot and artificial intelligence so uh, we call agronomy as the very heart of agriculture and uh, uh, similarly technology as a brain of agriculture. Now, let's let's look at this uh, data. So this data was pulled out from data.gov.in and uh, www.fao.org, uh, which uh, both of which publishes data about productivity uh, of uh, Indian, uh, different Indian states and different countries across the world. If you look at these numbers, uh, uh, let's look at a few uh, numbers like tomato. If you take uh, Indian average is about 9.58 tons per acre, while the Asian average stands at about uh, 42.78 uh, 
tons and brinjal 8 acres in india and about 29 acres um, as the asian average so if you look at most of the crops or all the crops there is a difference between the indian average and uh, asian average and obviously uh, like uh, dr uh, uh, professor moni said we have over 6 lakh villages in india and uh, taking technology to all the 6 lakh villages and making the numbers look like uh, uh, the uh, i mean uh, bring the, bringing them similar to israeli productivity or netherlands productivity is going to be time consuming but still uh, there is this number indicates that there is certainly um, a reason why we should look at that and uh, do something about it i mean how do we uh, match with the asian productivity or how do we match with the productivity numbers that we uh, get from european countries now if you look at the basic science photosynthesis is the most vital process now what photosynthesis does uh, the plant takes in sunlight during photo photosynthesis and converts that sunlight into energy and it is that energy which manifests itself in uh, growth of leaves flowers stem root or any part of the plant but for the plant to do that for the chlorophyll to actually and effectively uh, carry out photosynthesis there are certain uh, prerequisites and the prerequisites are one there has to be carbon dioxide in the atmosphere because plant needs carbon uh, for photosynthesis so carbon dioxide has to be in the air in the atmosphere for the plant to effectively do photosynthesis now is carbon dioxide uh, alone good enough uh, really no i mean it needs far more than that so if you look at the table on the right side uh, this table i had picked up from uh, wageningen university uh, website um, uh, wageningen university is one of the world's leading agricultural universities and uh, based in netherlands so they have given a list of minerals or elements that the plants will require Uh, so there are about 16 elements of which six are listed as primary and uh, we have secondary and micro so of the six if you look at the first one which is carbon uh, cont- uh, contributes about 45% so uh, that means the 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 plant needs a lot of carbon and uh, it takes carbon dioxide retains carbon and emits uh, oxygen and similarly it also needs oxygen and hydrogen so if you look at carbon oxygen and hydrogen uh, this totals about 96% of uh, the plants required now <clears throat> so uh, how how does plant get uh, oxygen and hydrogen it is through water uh, at the root zone now if you look at the bottom of the picture on the left side uh, you will see the uh, word air water balance so the second requirement for a plant to effectively do photosynthesis is that the root zone air water balance is maintained so what is air water balance it is a condition in which water and air at the root zone are highly optimal that means the root zone is not uh, extremely wet nor is it extremely dry so it is like uh, somewhere in between so there is a possibility of aeration in the soil as well as there is just right amount of water and the third is that the minerals that are needed by the plant uh, for its growth also have to be present in the soil that's a fourth requirement so if you really summarize all the requirements you need sunlight we need carbon dioxide there has to be air water balance uh, in the root zone the uh, that is because a plant can carry out photosynthesis very effectively only when the air water balance at the root zone is highly optimal and during the photosynthesis plants uptake the minerals therefore the minerals that are needed by the plant to produce flower or fruits have to be present in the soil so these are the four different situations so if these four situations are highly optimal then the plants can do absolutely effective photosynthesis now out of these four conditions sunlight you know open farming is uh, obviously not in our control so uh, using technology you know open farming trying to control sunlight is not going to be feasible or practical second carbon dioxide again it can be controlled in a glass house in a greenhouse but in open farming we will not be able to control carbon dioxide and besides 
carbon dioxide uh, uh, is there in atmosphere because every small um, uh, organism to people uh, you know animal to humans all of us emit carbon dioxide and that is there in the atmosphere which uh, uh, is up, up, uh, taken up by the plants therefore um, uh, not a big worry but at the same time we cannot use technology to compensate carbon dioxide in open farming so if you leave these two away which is managing sunlight and managing carbon dioxide of course i mean when i say uh, keep it away only in the context of open farming if it is a protected farming like a greenhouse or a polyhouse you can still manage sunlight and uh, co2 uh, to a limited, limited extent if you leave these two aside there are two things uh, which are air water balance and uh, minerals so these two are uh, absolutely possible uh, in in a open farm environment uh, where we can use technology and maintain perfect air water balance and we can use technology and ensure the right minerals at the right quantity are made available during the effective photosynthesis time so the effective photosynthesis time is typically from the sunrise in the morning till about let's say about 9:30 10 when the carbon dioxide level in the uh, atmosphere starts to come down because the plants should have consumed them of course it is not as true in the cities but uh, the situation about carbon dioxide uh, you know coming down uh, uh, at about 10 o'clock in the morning in villages where the uh, farming is primary is a, is a, is a fact so uh, so the the fact that we take away from this slide is that air water balance can be maintained by uh, adopting technology and uh, ensuring the right minerals at, uh, at the root zone when the when the photosynthesis can be effective is also possible by usage of technology now how do we improve photosynthesis like we uh, saw in the previous slide one is maintaining the air water balance so how do we maintain air water balance first of all um, if you think about a building if you uh, uh, if you want to build a house the first thing we do is go and approach an architect and the architect uh, comes out with the des design uh, architecture and the design and then uh, you know uh, we get second opinion and then uh, maybe uh, we get approval and then we build but when it comes to agriculture especially in india most of the irrigation design is um, the, the notion of irrigation uh, design doesn't exist and we in farm again uh, have in fact bought the uh, most sophisticated irrigation design software with which we can design irrigation whether it is sprinkler irrigation or whether it is uh, uh, drip irrigation we can actually design it simulate it and uh, find uh, check whether the irrigation is perfect or whether uh, the uh, uh, whether water can be supplied to each part of the farm uh, with uniform pressure or will there be pressure drop or high pressure in some places in fact we can see them all visually before finalizing a design so if we do that that is the first step in uh, guaranteeing even irrigation which in turn helps in being able to maintain air water balance the second is uh, appropriate bed structuring so the picture that you see on the right side uh, where people uh, this is from one of our customers uh, place where they have uh, made a bed uh, whose height is about 45 cm and uh, width is about 2 feet on top and 3 feet at the bottom and you can see how precisely they are trying to uh, make holes uh, for uh, the transplanting so this is second step so how bed, uh, the bed structuring and the mulching helps uh, it helps in uh, sp spreading out moisture the water evenly and uh, uh, it helps avoid evaporation therefore the moisture can be retained uh, as it is which the, the lack of sunlight directly on the uh, soil at the root zone also helps soil not uh, harden which in turn helps in the roots penetrating uh, much better than in a place where there is no bed formation or mulching and practically uh, if any of you uh, have you know go to a farm with uh, raised bed and mulch sheet you will be able to actually see uh, uh, you know if you if you dig out a little bit you can see the roots traveling almost as long as about 25 30 cm from the Uh, stem and similarly the direction of beds north south versus east west so typically north south provides the most optimal sunlight to the plants so that the photosynthesis can be highly efficient and after after we've done all this then get into precision irrigation where you maintain the moisture of the soil say for example 
the soil tension or the soil pressure uh, gives the indication of how moist the soil is. So typically a soil pressure of uh, 15 centibars to about uh, to 25 centibars in most soils. Some soils it can vary, but uh, on an average 15 to 25 centibars of pressure would mean perfect wetness or the perfect air water balance. And then coming on to the nutrient management, uh, there are things that we have to do, soil and water analysis. So you know what the soil has and the water, uh, what water has. And then if I uh, have, let's say, brinjal, and if my, my brinjal target is about 60 tons or 70 tons, and uh, we, 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 we will have to make a comparison of how much of um, nutrient to support 60 tons of productivity can be supplied by the nutrients that are available in the soil already, and what is the difference? So if there is a difference, and that has to be precisely calculated and applied to the soil so that the plant's requirement is met and therefore the plant can perform at its peak. So they can take the nutrients during photosynthesis and participate in the plant's growth. So these are the two ways. I mean, there are many, many uh, topics to talk about, but I'm just talking about a few of the core areas uh, to improve photosynthesis efficiency. Now, just by doing that, uh, the, this is one case study. Uh, one picture was shot on for, uh, 14th of December 2018, the other on the 2nd of December 2020. It took almost two years where this basic science of uh, maintaining the air water balance by ensuring only the right amount of water is supplied and ensuring the right mineral is supplied at the right time uh, to the right portion of the farm. Now you can see the pictures how the farm transformed in two years from where it was to where it is. And uh, the uh, short history about this farm is that the farmer was about to knock off all the trees and he was he wanted to go in for a new plantation. And uh, when our agronomist, team of agronomists visited this farm, they were of the strong opinion that it is purely because of over irrigation and indiscriminate usage of uh, minerals in the farm. So just by correcting that using technology in two years time, the plants uh, transformed themselves from uh, terribly bad condition to an excellent condition. And similarly, this is a, another example, uh, a tomato farm. In fact, uh, this is a single farm. Uh, on one side of the farm, they did traditional farming. And on the other side of the farm, they did scientific uh, farming. And this was one of our pilot farms way back in uh, 2014 to 2016. And you can see the difference. I mean, uh, it is the same tomato plant what you see on the left and on the right, but uh, and they were planted almost on the same day. Uh, but then you can see how uh, different they both look. I will now play a video for about four minutes uh, about this form, so you understand how the basic application of basic science uh, at the right precision can help the plant perform at its peak. So it is about four minutes. Please take a look at the video. வாங்கிட்டேன் <laughs> வாங்க <laughs> என்ன டிசீஸ் 
பொட்டாசு இந்த மாதிரி கொண்டு வருவாங்க பூச்சி கட்டுப்படுத்துறதுக்கு கடையில விற்கிற ஏதோ ஒரு மருந்து அதாவது அவங்களோட கான்செப்ட் ஒரு இரநூறு முந்நூறு அந்த ரேஞ்சில் போய் வாங்கணும் அப்படிங்கிற ஒரு கான்செப்ட்ல போயிட்டு அந்த அந்த மாதிரி ஒரு மருந்து வாங்கிட்டு வந்து பேசிக்கா அது என்ன வேலை செய்யணும் கூட தெரியாது அந்த மாதிரி ஒரு மருந்து வாங்கிட்டு வந்து அடிச்சு விட்டுறாங்க மூணு நாளைக்கு அந்த செடியோட இது மூணு நாள் வயசு கம்மி இந்த பீல்ட பார்ப்போம் அதே ரகம் அது அதே நாள்ல நாத்துக்கிட்டது நல்லா இருக்கும் நாங்க நடக்கும் போது செலவு ஜாஸ்தி இதெல்லாம் இங்க செட் ஆகும் சொல்லி யோசிச்சோம் ஆனா இப்ப பீல்ட பாக்கும் போது மனசு கொஞ்சம் சந்தோஷமா இருக்குது இது வந்து ஒரு லிட்டர் பேர் ஒரு ட்ரிப்பர் யூஸ் பண்ணிக்கிறோம் இது பாத்தீங்கன்னா ஒரு மணி நேரத்துக்கு ஒரு லிட்டர் தான் தண்ணி வரும் அந்த அளவுக்கு தான் இருக்கு அப்புறம் வந்து பாத்தீங்கன்னா மல்சிங் ஷீட்டு அதுக்கு மேல ஸ்டாக் பண்ணி கொண்டு இருக்கோம் உங்களுக்கு இது நாங்க இவ்வளவு வளரும் நாங்க எக்ஸ்பெக்ட் பண்ணவே இல்லை நாங்க அந்த சரி தான் நாங்க நட போட்டு அந்த மாதிரிதான் பண்ணிட்டு இருந்தோம் அப்படிங்கிறதுனால இது வேணா என்னோட ஹைட்டுக்கு இந்த ஹைட்டுக்கு வரும் அப்படிங்கிற மாதிரி ஃபீல் பண்ணும் இதனோட என்ன என்னோட ஹைட்டா போயிட்டு இருக்கு குச்சி இனிமே வாங்கி கட்டணும் போல இருக்கு இன்னும் கொஞ்சம் பெருசா கட்டணும்னு நினைக்கிறேன் ஆனா ஈல்டு வயசுலயும் இதுலயும் சூப்பரா இருக்கு ஒரு காய் அப்படின்னு கேட்டீங்கன்னா அப்படியே இவ்வளவு ஃப்ரூட் செட்டுங்கிறது நாங்க பார்த்தே இல்ல ஒரு ஃப்ரூட் ரெண்டு ஃப்ரூட் நிக்கும் ஆனா இவ்வளவு ஃப்ரூட் செட் நல்லா இருக்கு எல்லாத்துலயுமே ஈல்டு வைஸ் சூப்பரா இருக்கு அடுத்தடுத்து ஃப்ளவரிங் ஸ்டேஜும் கரெக்டா மெயின்டைன் ஆகி போயிட்டு இருக்கு நோய் பிரச்சனை வந்துச்சு எங்களுக்கு முதல்ல அதுக்கான ப்ரிவெண்ட் எல்லாமே அவங்களே கொஞ்சம் சின்ன சின்ன ஐடியாஸ் கொடுத்தாங்க ட்ராப்ஸ் அப்புறம் வந்து பாத்தீங்கன்னா அப்போ இது வந்து பாத்தீங்கன்னா ட்ரை குரோமான்னு சொல்லிட்டு ஒட்டுணி அட்டை இதை நாங்கள் கட்டி விட்டுருக்கோம் இது வந்து பாத்தீங்கன்னா அந்த பூச்சிகளை இது வந்து பேர் வந்து பாத்தீங்கன்னா இரவிலங்கு பூச்சி இது வந்து அந்த நன்க புள்ளு புள்ளுக்கு சாப்பிட்ற பேன் இந்த மாதிரியான சம்மந்த பூச்சிகளை வந்து இது வந்து சாப்பிட்றோம் அடுத்து வந்து பாத்தீங்கன்னா இதே மாதிரி புள்ளுக்குள்ள வந்து ட்ராப்ஸ் வச்சிருக்கோம் செக்ஸ் ப்ரோமோ ட்ராப்ஸ் வச்சிருக்கோம் அது வந்து பாத்தீங்கன்னா பெண் பூச்சியோட ஸ்மெல் வந்து ஆண் பூச்சியில புறமை கவர் தெளித்து அது சாகடிச்சிடும் அது போக உங்களுக்கு சோலார் ட்ராப்ஸ் வச்சிருக்கோம் அது வந்து பாத்தீங்க அப்படின்னு கேட்டீங்கன்னா நைட்ல வந்து சிக்ஸ் தேர்ட்டில இருந்து நைட் நைன் ஓ கிளாக் வரைக்கும் யூவி ரேசஸ் பார்ம் பண்ணுவோம் அந்த லைட் வெளிச்சத்துக்கு வந்து பாத்தீங்கன்னா இந்த ஏரியாவில் இருக்கிற பூச்சி எல்லாமே கவர் ஆயிடுது அந்த ட்ராப்பி இப்போ பாக்கலாம் உங்களுக்கு இதெல்லாம் பாருங்க எவ்வளவு காய் இருக்கு ஃபுல்லா காய் இருக்கு இதுல இவ்வளவு காய் காய்க்குன்னு இந்த செடி காய்க்குன்னு எங்களுக்கு சுத்தமாவே எங்களுக்கு தெரியாது ஓகே சோ Uh, unfortunately the 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 language is in i mean uh, the farmer is from tamil nadu therefore it, it was in tamil but i hope you are able to follow the subtitles that were added so essentially what you saw in this short video clipping was uh, uh, application of perfect application of science without using any modern technology so in fact this was one of our early uh, pilot and prototype farms uh, where we experimented the basic science and principles of precision farming and uh, we were able to achieve uh, in, in in this video you saw two farms and one we had less than 4 tons of yield and uh, the one that you saw second had, uh, had recorded an yield of 84 tons in the same one acre each so that is a huge difference the uh, right application of science uh, uh, the agriculture science if applied can uh, you know make a huge difference but is that really practical yes when you do a, a r&d it is always practical for you to precisely administer have a lot of people check uh, various parameters and immediately respond uh, in a r&d and pilot it is definitely possible but in the mass production uh, maintaining such precision without the intervention of technology is definitely not practical so there comes technology so our uh, primary dependence is on artificial intelligence and uh, internet of things we call technology as a brain behind agriculture while agriculture i mean uh, agronomy itself is a heart of agriculture now artificial intelligence it is essentially the ability of a computer to carry out tasks like a human like uh, if you can think of a child a child has a very effective and powerful brain but lacks information lacks data so once the child uh, you know uh, looks at the environment uh, starts to interact with people sees different um, uh, situations it starts to uh, develop once the data uh, is developed in the brain 
uh, the, the brain can then start uh, you know analyzing the data and and uh, uh, make judgments so most of what we do are uh, results of the data and the situations that we have seen in the past so artificial intelligence is essentially mimicking human decision making ability by a computer and an example of that is this so for those of you who understand cruise control in a car which has been there for a very long time so you know you, you can turn the cruise control on let's say you set it at about 80 kilometers an hour the car uh, will drive itself i mean you'll have to steer it though but then you can take your leg uh, off the pedal and the car will keep a uh, safe uh, uh, speed not safe speed the speed you set if you set 80 kilometers it is going to drive itself at 80 kilometers an hour but uh, but uh, although it can drive it can maintain speed if there is an obstacle if let's say you uh, as a driver we fall asleep if there is a uh, 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 lane change the car does not think because it only knows to maintain 80 kilometers an hour speed but on the other hand adaptive cruise control is a new technology which came in after uh, 2000 uh, where the car learns its surroundings it can shift lane if the uh, uh, space ahead is choked uh, it can do quite a lot of things that we generally do while driving you know uh, so this you uh, uh, pulls in data from the environment and keeps it for further le learning and based on what it has learned takes action uh, uh, for, for the for the present and for the future so this is a simple example of how artificial intelligence can help in a real time real world uh, solve a real world problem now machine learning in fact just like a human like uh, the example that i mentioned a human learns from past incidents so there is a lot of data that uh, humans learn from past incidents and that the, they are stored in the brain similarly machine learning uh, which is part of artificial intelligence i mean the, the artificial intelligence has to have machine learning because you uh, get data from different uh, uh, environment like in in uh, our case uh, if you can look at all the icons on the left side valve tank uh, filters npk which is fertilization uh, electricity uh, so uh, we can we can get data such as soil moisture soil temperature ambient moisture uh, ambient uh, temperature and the uh, uh, relative humidity the uh, nutrients from the soil availability of power the uh, humidity the carbon dioxide level and uh, the temperature and the sunlight in a polyhouse so like this you can get a lot of data and the data through machine learning is processed to understand to first of all to learn uh, what this data means say for example um, at a certain temperature soil temperature at, at a certain um, uh, atmospheric temperature at a certain uh, wind velocity at a certain air pressure uh, and at a certain cloud cover and sun, uh, sunlight how long do you irrigate to maintain air water balance for 24 hours can be a simple learning by the system so like this uh, there are um, um, over 200 different types of learnings grotron uses these um, you know small small things on the field uh, using sensors to collect data put them through machine learning so they start to learn first and with what they learned and by comparing their learning with the outcome the, the, the machine observed it will then start to predict and then the prediction sometimes may be right may be wrong so there is there are also methodologies in which you can identify uh, what is the accuracy of the prediction so as it gains more data as it starts to learn more as it starts to predict more the accuracy of prediction will start to improve and you can even take it all the way to 98 99 99.5 percent of uh, accuracy at that point you can say the machine learning has reached its uh, um, peak performance and can more or less predict with a greater accuracy without much error so the machine learning is an integral part of artificial intelligence which uh, pulls data from various sources and uh, starts to learn similar to how humans learn and predict uh, uh, so that is how the machine learning is used in the space of agriculture uh, as well the next component is internet of things so internet of things you can simply imagine anything when i say anything it can be a watch it can be 
a fan in your house an air conditioner in your house anything that perhaps has a sensor or connectivity with the internet and can exchange about itself say for example your energy meter at home if it can communicate to your cell phone over the internet and say that there is a power cut if it can do that then your energy meter at home uh, can be called as internet of things so anything that can connect itself with the internet and exchange data either send out uh, the status about itself or get some information or instruction from uh, the internet and execute a task say for example um, my air conditioner at home can uh, take instruction from my cell phone uh, wherever my cell phone is and can turn itself on and keep a temperature of uh, 23 degrees and uh, for, uh, for many of you who may have purchased cars in the last one or two years may have this feature may have seen this feature in your cars where you can start it using an app and uh, turn the ac on and set a certain temperature in, at that uh, in that case your car is an is a thing uh, is an internet of thing so real world examples like car a plant a pump an elephant a tiger anything uh, uh, an elephant with a gps tag or a tiger with an identifier attached they all become part of the communication where they interact uh, with uh, 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 with some systems through internet and in our case the plants are also part of uh, internet because uh, we embed uh, sensors near the plant uh, to collect information about the plants therefore a plant also becomes an internet of things in our parlance so we talked about the agriculture science agronomy we talked about technology artificial intelligence and uh, 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 internet of things each of the three is a separate vertical by itself and uh, is a separate degree by uh, uh, by itself therefore we are really not going to talk uh, extremely deep into any of those sciences but the whole idea is to uh, uh, touch on those technologies and see how the, the agronomy as a science and the technology come together and uh, become a useful product so uh, agronomy science and the technology artificial intelligence and uh, uh, the uh, internet of things came together and we used these very effectively and built this uh, product called grotron in fact grotron is an autonomous farm platform it is a, it is a technology platform eventually we are also planning to make this platform a open source platform so that people can build on it uh, one doesn't i mean one doesn't have to reinvent the wheel so they can take from where we have left and then continue so uh, as it stands today uh, this perfect mix of science and technology has given um, consistent increase of 50% or more productivity consistent reduction of water by about 50% uh, or more and similarly reduction in fertilizers by 20% or more and it is very important because all of us know more than 80% of the fresh water is used for agriculture so reduction in 50% really means quite a lot and similarly uh, increase in yield by 50% means extremely uh, important because um, the arable land is shrinking across the world for various reasons industries have to grow and uh, whether we like it or not uh, it is a farmland that, that that is compromised when the uh, industries grow not just in india anywhere in the world therefore uh, increase in yield in the same acreage Uh, uh is a very important element and uh, like dr i mean professor uh, also mentioned um uh, uh, 29 people by a farmer to 260 people this can even help even more and similarly fertilizer reduction is another important factor where uh, you don't i mean as you apply only the necessary fertilizers to the plant uh, the plants take what you apply and then the uh, flan uh, the, the soil doesn't become infertile so to that extent reduction in fertilizer applications is also extremely important now let's see how this technology works how, how the science and the technology come together so grotron is a autonomous farm pl- farm uh, platform and we have also patented this so this is a patented technology so if you can uh, look at the rectangles on the left side and imagine each of them being a different uh, section or or plot in a form uh, which is controlled by a separate valves and you have sensors planted you can have uh, different many different types of sensors right from temperature to npk uh, to understand the mineral status of the soil to 
ECPH, so many sensors you can uh, uh, implant, but uh, uh, bare minimum, we have four sensors. One, uh, soil moisture, soil temperature, ambient uh, temperature, and uh, ambient relative humidity are the four basic sensors uh, which are uh, installed in any case. So these uh, data are transmitted over to the cloud infrastructure every now and then. And uh, they, then, like I mentioned earlier, uh, this data is processed through machine learning and uh, there is some intelligence derived. The intelligence could be that uh, now the air water balance of the soil is perfect, therefore you don't need to irrigate. Or it could be that there is a fertilizer that has to be sent. Uh, so now uh, the, the air water balance is also perfect, therefore let me send the fertilizers in. Um, it could be that um, now, given the current temperature, given the current atmospheric pressure, given the current uh, sunlight and the sun luminosity, uh, maybe uh, irrigating 15 minutes is good enough uh, to maintain the air water balance for the next 24 hours. Or I have to, the, the decision could be that uh, the irrigation has, has to be split into four, 10 minutes in the morning, uh, you know, another 10 minutes in the, in the evening, six o'clock, another 10 minutes or 15 minutes at night to maintain uh, air water balance all 24 hours. So the, decision, the decisions are outcome of uh, machine learning and artificial uh, intelligence. And similarly, if it is a protected structure, the climate control, it can be a fogger, fan and pad, air conditioner, all based on the real time uh, 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 situation in the protected structure. The temperature can be maintained, the humidity can be maintained, the carbon dioxide levels can be maintained, the light intensity can be maintained, all again by use of uh, IoT and artificial intelligence. So, uh, and and uh, in India, the electricity is an issue in, in most places, and particularly uh, even if a state is uh, energy sufficient, uh, the farm sector always gets a power cut uh, in all the states, most states at least. Therefore, modern farmers today, most of the, a lot of people are bringing in gensets, especially the ones that are going for polyhouse and precision farming, they bring in gensets. So we have also made uh, our technology adopt to the uh, uh, to the gensets where if there is no grid power supply, our system can automatically uh, turn on the genset provided there is a need. Say, for example, uh, irrigation has to happen or a fertilization has to happen, uh, climate control has to happen, then uh, Groton can automatically turn the genset on, do whatever it has to do and turn it off when it is no more required. So this is how the uh, agronomy as a science. So uh, if you now recall, there are two parameters that we can control to improve the photosynthesis efficiency. One is air water balance. The other is fertilization. And of course, in uh, polyhouses or a, or a protected structure, uh, the temperature and light parameters as well. So all these, uh, including carbon dioxide, can be handled by Grotron by a fair mix of science and technology. I'll show you, I, I'll, I'll take you through another short video. Uh, this is about one minute. So um, the uh, 
um, as you, uh, you, may, you may have seen in the video, we have even done paddy with uh, uh, drip irrigation and grow tron. So now this is what we think uh, by uh, you know improving the productivity by reducing the water usage and by re reducing the fertilizer fertilizer usage. We think we can impact some of the uh, show some impact on the sustainable goals of uh, UN. And I have picked the ones that we believe uh, where we make an impact. And very quickly, um, if we have a goal of 1.86 lakh acres uh, over the next four years in India, and if we did that, about 52,000 crores of liters of water can be saved in a year, which directly translates to about 3,500 megawatts of electricity, around 20 to 30 percent reduction in uh, fertilizers, about 600 crores of additional income in, in the hands of farmers. And labor intense, uh, dependency in crop care almost brought to zero. And we think more rural entrepreneurs uh, driven by this hyper-local intelligence will emerge. And uh, this is our favorite subject, potential reverse migration. We really strongly believe that can happen. And uh, untampered data, none of the data that, uh, that is generated here is human entered. It is all through IoT automatic capturing. Therefore, it could potentially help in insurance, bank loans, and government plannings. And uh, with the data that we collect, we are at the moment developing platform where the farmers, suppliers, service providers, buyers, banking and insurance, the, every, everything, everyone that is uh, needed for a farm is connected autonomously on need basis based on the consensus of the farmer. So that platform also is being built at the moment. And the <clears throat> uh, data is presented uh, through mobile apps and desktop app to the farmers. So, uh, 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 you know, a lot of information is being presented. So this is uh, a snapshot of, a, uh, uh, I mean, this is a sugarcane farm. In fact, in terms of productivity, we have accomplished 84 tons in uh, uh, tomato and 106 tons uh, in uh, sugarcane. And these are some data. I'm not going to the details of the data, but then it is only to uh, uh, indicate that rich data is possible even from farms, which was unheard of and unbelievable until uh, a year or two ago. But today, all these are possible. You can have so much rich data coming out of farm every minute. Right. Now, what we are doing right now is uh, we have done um, irrigation, fertilization, and climate management. We brought them into an, into an autonomous state. But what we have left out is the pest detection and control. Uh, we are now in the R&D to make that autonomous. We are also developing a drone bone sprayer, which can uh, really penetrate uh, uh, deep underneath the leaves so that the systemic pesticides can be avoided. Today, uh, in any drone-based application, the uh, most poisonous systemic pesticides are being used. So we are doing uh, R&D at the moment to avoid that. And we are also in an R&D uh, in developing an autonomous vehicle to pluck high-value uh, uh, producers like cardamom. And this initiative is funded by GITA, Global Innovation and Technology Alliance, which is part of Department of Science and Technology. And uh, we are doing this in partnership with a company by name Vidoc in Spain. And that company for this project is funded by the government of Spain. So, and what next? So in, in our opinion, uh, yes, technology is good, uh, but um, it needs to be made more affordable to the marginal farmers and that can only uh, that can happen by collaborating with the institutions like Shobit and uh, the governments uh, we are looking forward to uh, just do that in making the technology cheaper uh, to the farmers and similarly from safeguarding water for the future point of view i think there is a need to do a lot of pilots and benchmarking across india and other growing countries as well and uh, just like we had seen over the last few years a huge technology explosion in the, in the space of fin, fintech and e-commerce. There needs to be another technology explosion in the field of agriculture, modern agriculture. I think the new generation will pitch in and fill the gap that is there in uh, uh, technology explosion in the agriculture space. And once that happens, uh, the uh, uh, affordability also will, in my opinion, automatically come in. And uh, these are some of the awards. And the nostalgic value is that the award that we received on the 22nd of February to 2018, Professor Moni happens to uh, be one of the uh, persons at the podium presenting award. So 
uh, that is a real nostalgic value. And these are some of the list of awards we have received. And with that, uh, I would uh, uh, I, I bring to the end of my presentation and uh, open to any questions. And Professor Mooney, thank you for the opportunity. And this is the last slide of my presentation. Professor, I think your uh, mic is on mute. And the last one, your awards which you put it. I was clicking it by the time you closed it. Can you go oh. back? Sure, sure. I'm very happy that you put my photograph also. <laughs> <laughs> that shows that the you know you know uh, you know our DNA works very close. <laughs> Okay, so it is a very beautiful. Okay, that is one query has come, Mr. Hemant Kumar. Can we use artificial intelligence in the natural farming to help farmers to increase the productivity and how we aware the farmers to use this technology, how these technologies are helpful for the small and marginal farmers to double their income? Mr. Hemant Kumar. Yes, it, it is helpful in natural farming as well. In fact, uh, as we speak, uh, we have recently done a technology implementation in a, in a form that follows what you call as the natural farming methods. And uh, uh, to the other question on the uh, affordability of the marginal farmers and small farmers, uh, as I had admitted in my presentation, uh, any technology, in fact, to be very open and honest, even drip irrigation, Basic drip irrigation is not affordable by many farmers. So modern technologies, uh, in my opinion, is going to really take a long time for that to become affordable by the marginal farmers, which is where I think the uh, uh, startups like us and uh, institutions like Shobit and the governments have to work together in making that uh, a reality. And at this point, maybe I would also like to uh, bring to the notice of uh, Professor Moni uh, although we have a lot of schemes that you had listed out, even today, uh, most of the demo farms installed by the government are in collaboration with Israel. None of the demo setups are uh, in collaboration with any startup in India. So that is something I would like to bring to your notice in case if you can uh, make somebody think about that. Uh, there are a lot of startups in India who can make things much affordable and effective. So governments also have to look at uh, inwards with the startups than looking only at Israel to make it. No, it's uh, very, very, very important, uh, Mr. Benjamin. Uh, you know, that's the reason only I have been voicing that the country needs 2.25 lakh startups, one per each gram panchayat. The message is very clear and you also spelt it out. And then, yes, technology from Israel is, is a high tech. But that doesn't mean that you should, you know, you cannot encourage, you know, or you should not encourage these startups, you know, coming from India. It's very important. And it's a point which we will make it as a policy paper recommendation on the basis of this recommendation, you know, for this webinar to the concerned department. It is very important. You put it very effectively. I think if you would have put it as a, one of the slides, it would have been very, you know, you know, impactful. But you made it, it is recorded, it is also live, and we will see to that, you know, this reaches the highest, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, body in the government to see to that why agri-tech startups in India are being, uh, are, uh, why, are they, why are they not being encouraged? Very important. That's the reason only that this university is now tying up with all startups, those who are coming and presenting their case study in this international webinar series and also the national webinar series that how we can work together and impact you know the policy makers and the government missionaries and so on and so forth it's a very important point you made it and also mr you know hemanthi made it that is it possible to adopt in natural farming zero budget farming you know it is very important even zero budget farming and natural farming also uses agronomy as a base and this is agronomy plus artificial intelligence for precision farming and is very important. It will add more value. 
that is no you know the thing is that it doesn't include you know that you know uh, uh, extraneous conditions that it is built in and that's why the query from mr hemant is very particular and very important i will be very happy that mr hemant kumar can also forward his whatsapp number in the chat box we would like to you know uh, talk to him you know after uh, after the webinar uh, uh, you know uh, uh, during the later days thank you very much and is there any other query mr um, manish no sir if there is no query can you i would like to invite mr um, you know uh, mr uh, prakash you know and uh, you know a progressive mr vihas you know you know a progressive farmer from mysore mr vihas can you put your video on and give your uh, you know views and understanding after listening to this very important talk mr vihas yeah, yeah. Uh, are you able to hear me uh, just give me yeah, yes that's true but you also you show your face unfortunately the uh, uh, wifi is an issue here so i would prefer to do it uh, without the video otherwise it keeps getting hang so i hope that's okay okay fine no problem please speak okay so let me introduce myself uh, my name is vikas uh, i am an engineer uh, to begin with and also a master in manufacturing management so i have had uh, 17 years of experience in manufacturing and i started my uh, journey in agriculture in 2019 by end uh, middle of 2019 the overall objective of getting into agriculture was just to try it out because this was something which was very fascinating for me since my father was in agriculture for more than 45 years or agriculture related topics so i got into agriculture and then started working on it then i realized that it Uh, that it took over as a passion for me so i completely got into agriculture started doing lot more activities and started connecting dots from my manufacturing into agriculture and started seeing as to where what we could do to make things better for me so with this as the point i started searching for uh, a farm and i realized that in and around bangalore uh, where i am put up to get a agricultural farm was very difficult so i had to move on and ultimately moved to mysore and near mysore i was able to get a farm but that was almost around 200 kilometers away from where i am put up so i started realizing that managing a farm sitting in bangalore and the farm being 200 kilometers away was quite a challenge and i started looking at what i need to do to make things better and have better control at the same time also get better results out of the farm so this was the background with which i started looking at it and i also realized that once i got more and more into farming that farming is nothing like manufacturing in fact the variability in the farming is so high and there are so many aspects to farming and if you really have to get on top of things then it is very important that you have more and more control over the variability that is there so with this as the background i started looking at different topics so one of the point that i realized was the variation of the climate itself so once we started farming the first thing we put in place was a polyhouse and said that without a polyhouse the environmental impacts are very difficult and to manage that it would be very very difficult so we started off with a polyhouse and then we subsequently extended it to two polyhouses what the other aspects which we started looking at was the water so the issue with the water is uh, in summer we don't have water and then if you are looking at something which is sustainable we have to take care of water so what we did was we had two bore wells we did the bore well rejuvenation for both the bore wells that we have so that the water source is con- constant for us we also had put a what we call as a farm pond a pretty big one and connected it to our polyhouses so that all the water that comes onto the polyhouse flows into the uh, farm pond and that was how we developed it so the idea is which are all the variability and how we can reduce the variability so one was water which i told what we did the other one was environment so that was our climate and that was to a larger extent taken care by polyhouse 
the third variability that was of course a big issue is also in terms of manpower so when we started looking at manpower uh, we realized that the manpower is being used for let's say activities which really does not uh, need a lot of uh, i mean the weeding and activities like this so we have to really improve the usage of manpower for decision making and critical aspects which probably we cannot support in other ways so we started looking at how do we improve the productivity of the manpower and when we started looking at that we realized that more than 3 hours to 3 and a half hours in a day he spends time on irrigation and fertigation and uh, this is in our farm ours is not a big big farm it's 6 acres of farm uh, where we have 2 acres of poly house and the rest of it is open field and in such a small farm we had almost around 32 valves for irrigation and when we looked at it he had to just uh, do, do irrigation for one plot he had to switch on switch off around four to five valves at any point of time and if he does a mistake we realized that this was leading to multiple other issues so to take out this aspect uh, we decided that we'll go ahead with an automation and this was also a prerequisite for me because i am staying 200 kilometers away and we cannot really keep tab on things the way it is happening down there in mysore so we started checking out for different uh, automation facility that is there and when i did deep deep uh, let's say check on this uh, there are many farms i mean many automation solutions none of it uh, which i felt was something which would give the kind of solutions i was looking at and uh, if it was then the cost was uh, really really huge so it was a balance that i had to strike and for me when i went and met ben and went and looked at all the farms where the automation is happening uh, i got a kind of confidence that this is what would work for me and that is how we started so i have really worked nearly worked for 6 months to 6 and a half months with ben very intensively and this was the pre preparation that had to be done before we went ahead and implemented the automation the grotron and i would say this is a prerequisite a good well planned activity before putting an automation makes a lot of difference in terms of the kind of output that you are looking at at the end of the day so we spent a lot of time i heard ben talk about the basic irrigation design or uh, the facilities that needs to be put in place the knowledge that needs to be put in place so all these things we did initially before we went ahead and implemented and then in 2020 june when we were ultimately able to implement broton in our farm also uh, thanks to covid the timeline that we had in mind was quite different but ultimately sorry 2021 we were able to put this complete broton setup in our farm uh, before putting this we also did the block diagrams we looked at what could work what kind of valves we have we had multiple times the grotron people coming over and it was a very close collaboration and interaction that we had i would say this is a very important step it is not that it's a plug and play system that we think more more effort that was in initially makes the system much more and useful once we put the system in place uh, i started admit that i got lot and lot more than i had thought i would get uh, it took some time to stabilize i would say it is not something which would happen overnight we in fact had 6 months of very deep uh, uh, connect on these topics there were issues which we were facing quite often but uh, i must admit that um, with the kind of service mindset that the whole farm again team had i never had an issue in terms of the issues being resolved that were getting uh, that were coming up in my farm so we went ahead we in we said instead of doing it in one poly house we would do it in the whole of the farm so we have a setup where all my farm is right now connected we also it's not only about irrigation we also have the complete fertigation setup so there are tanks which we have put in place where all the different fertilizers are put and then it is very easy for us to Uh, go ahead and do the fertigation as per the need of the plots we have six different plots even though it's a small farm uh, we have multiple products or uh, produce being grown and that means it 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 needs it's quite complex and 
one benefit that we have seen with Grohran also is the tank. So, with the other mission that I've seen is that they have two major tanks, the tank A and the tank B, uh, where all the, uh, let's say, compatible fertilizers are put. And that is the same ratio which goes into the difference. Here, you can mix and match to the need of, uh, let's say, the particular crop. And based on that, the function and the irrigation can happen. And that's a big, big advantage. So for me, for example, in a tomato pl plot, if I want to have more 19 or and uh, let's say let's, uh, less of uh, uh, 050 to 34, it is quite possible for me to increase and decrease. Whereas when you have a ratio, it might be more difficult. So this was one. And second thing is the air water ratio, which uh, Ben talked about, uh, is something which has made a difference is what I feel. Uh, one example is we had uh, in our polyhouse cucumber which we were growing and it was for the first time that we were growing cucumber. Uh, so for me, I did not have any experience of growing it. Um, we started off, we did pretty a lot of mistakes. Uh, in spite of that, uh, the average yield which I have been told in a cucumber per plant is around 3.5 kgs per plant. Whereas we ended up around 4.9, nearing 5 kgs per plant. And I would attribute this to the irrigation and the fertigation, which we just had to set it up initially, and then it took care of things on its own. So overall, I would say uh, the whole uh, farming sector is something where I see that uh, there are a lot of uh, legacy practices. There are a lot of... Uh, um exploitation and uh, i would also say inefficiencies which are built in and these are newer techniques aspects which needs to be built in and once this is done consistently over a period of time is when we would start seeing results coming out and the farming sector growing and these are things which we need to really push in future and try to see how we can get the maximum out of it so uh, to conclude i would say i'm um, uh, I'm very satisfied with uh, the uh, Grotron that I have in my farm. It gives me a lot of control. I sit here and manage everything. In fact, I would give an example. The people in the farm call me and say, uh, hey, Vikas, do you have, uh, is the power there in the farm? Because they would be in one corner, they're not able to see. But I have it in my fingertips here to say, yes, it's there. No, it's not there. So it's, it's given me a lot of, uh, let's say, one is control aspect. But the other aspect is a lot of ways in which I could improve the productivity and the efficiency in the farm. And this is something which I'm very satisfied with. So I would also be uh, interested to adapt these things further as things develop. And I'm very happy to be associated with Protron. So uh, thank you, Ben, uh, for all the support that you've been giving. And also thanks. Uh, Professor Mani for giving me an opportunity to express my uh, experience in this uh, forum. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. It is a very important um, understanding and appreciation and also feedback on the technology which has been designed and evolved and made it operational with so much impactful at the grassroots level. You know, that is a 50% more production. 50% less water, you know, and, uh, you know, that uh, 20, uh, you know, 20%, you know, uh, you know, uh, in, you know, income increase. These are all, is a very important parameters, which today we were able to, you know, 20% fertilizer reduction. You know, it is, it is a parameter, you know, it's very important from almost all impact study, you know, parameters are concerned. And uh, Mr. Vikas, thank you very much. We will, uh, we'll, you know, uh, you know, we have now your contact. We'll be able to, in, you know, interact with you for uh, further progress. And Mr. Ben Benjamin Raja, in your presentation, you know, you, you know, you made the realization very meaningful. And you know, I said it to you. Said that what next? You know, let me start. Let me summarize from that. What next? You know, the what next is technology explosion. See, I'm, I, I'm a computer science person, mathematics person, mathematics. I studied MSc in mathematics from Vivekananda College in Mailapur, Ramakrishna Mission, Vivekananda College, 74, 76. 
and afterwards mtech in computer science from iit chennai you know and then i took a passion to introduce technology in the rural areas when i was given an opportunity by government of india that you visualize as to how to introduce computerization in 512 districts way back in 87 and i conducted study i took a kerala as a model went to every district had a workshop i was shown black flag present day mr modi gets a black flag go back modi and that time in 1987 go back money in from kerala but the credit and then well, the credit goes to some of the officials like mr varadachari secretary planning and that time who was coordinating some of the ink collectors who were you know interacting with me and then it is a chief and that time chief minister mr ek nayanar he took a bold decision against his own party that it is a central government scheme we should use it it goes to throughout the country and then if we would like to spend money from state budget that we'll take a call whether communist party would like to go for computerization or not but this district program in nicret is a government of india program and we should get benefit out of it today you can see that uh, you know the development in kerala so starting from 87 and then you know the you know the 28 sectoral database development program and then 95 i took a very big conference i conducted to give an it blueprint for agriculture national conference on informatics for sustainable development various programs has been operationalized with the support of the minister of agriculture and uh, then towards the end you know we i thought i must have traveled more than 450 districts in the country i thought that there is a rural distress we have to bring back the rural students back to agriculture farm again i didn't i didn't i didn't realize that the i didn't coin the word i thought that i should bring back the rural students back to agriculture as a preferred option of career development and then you know that this is a university sobit institute of engineering and technology dimt university invited me as a visiting professor when i was in service and then after my, when i got retired as director general nic on may 31st 2013 first june i got a you know you know invitation from the chancellor of the university to join as a professor emeritus and set up center of excellence this is the first public you know in a private university have you know five centers of excellence center for agricultural informatics and governance studies center for agri business and disaster management studies center for informatics development solutions and application center for industry 4.0 technology studies and application and center for health informatics and computing to derive technology for the rural area rural india can provide up through appropriate technology adoption 1.83 trillion dollars to the existing gdp this is very important and then and today's topic is agronomy plus ai leads to effective precision farming it's a future farming democratization of farming and this is where i felt very happy that this university has launched an mtech level program in agriculture informatics first it was in the whole world to train the agriculture graduates graduate engineers and then post graduate you know you know students from non engineering discipline to get into it in agriculture as a new discipline called agricultural informatics and then to get into agri startups to help the 14.5 crores operation which you know uh, uh, holders in the country 80% of the you know uh, small and marginal farmers you know they have to have informatics led development you know and uh, they are all very small farms and this is very important i am very happy that what next and you have to generate lot of gen x capabilities and this is where it has to be done through agricultural informatics discipline mtech in agricultural informatics btech in agricultural informatics bg diploma in agricultural informatics diploma in agricultural informatics india is an agrarian economy we can't generate people for clerical jobs in government we need to generate people all educational institutions they generate people for clerical jobs government jobs so that they can get salary pension family pension and so on and so forth we need to generate people to get back to agriculture india is an agrarian economy 450 you know crops and you know 365 days of sunshine 
and uh, which country has it in the world india is the only country which can grow food for throughout the world for throughout a year and which can be the food fuel for the you know entire world and this is where agricultural informatics is a discipline which talks about you know the digital technologies that's why this university has two webinar series during the covid situation every day every week and that agriculture technology and digital technology and today your talk was really you know you know awakening you know it is awakened the people opened the eyes of many of the people who look at it agriculture is an unstructured problem and ia is for solving unstructured problems and agriculture uses that what is available below the ground what is available on the ground and what is coming from the sky above the ground and on the ground above the ground and below the ground and we don't have a meaningful comprehensive agricultural resources information system in the country and that is a pathetic condition we don't have a farm wise farmer wise comprehensive information if the comprehensive information is available and everybody who wants to work will be in a position to access the data and provide facilities that is very important and all agriculture offices block level agriculture offices they don't have even a, you know data about each farmer in their block they don't know they don't even maintain a register of that block the farmers what they produce why they are not able to produce whether they are able to sell this what what they have produced what is the real problem he doesn't have he or she so this is where that you, they should be the facebook for the farmers but they are not the facebook farmer had to run from pillar to paste this is where the you know this a technology the, you know the uh, rural youths and a person like you you said it very clearly that you have not studied agriculture science but you know that as a person worked in various international bodies that how you have to bring in a precision farming it may not a precision farming cannot be precise without the data precise data it is essential and agriculture you know the blockchain technology and the you know big data analytics and artificial intelligence and the remote sensing data drone sing, drone uh, drones data and the gis technology can bring in you know lot of data driven agriculture in the country it's very important agriculture 4.0 agriculture 5.0 should go from india it's very important and and i am very happy that today you have all your slides needs you know very detailed discussions and this has to be the part of our agricultural mtech agricultural informatics program all the students of mtech btech agricultural informatics bg diploma and a diploma in agricultural informatics they should take as this as a case tool and then go and start a startup and integrated farm health management alone is a trillion dollar economy every silos generate the data and then nobody uses it for a location specific agriculture science graduates they don't even taught the geographical gis technology remote sensing technology and this is where that agricultural informatics as a discipline this university has launched it first university in the world and center for agricultural informatics and e governance research studies once again is the first because of the reason that i as a as a as a computer science student i thought and as person from the rural area i should bring technology back to rural area it's very important and that's how my 35 years more than 35 years of journey you know with the barefoot in the rural area and working with the people like you it's 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 an awakening process for everybody and the reason that in the argo african asian rural development organization joining with us in such type of you know international webinar series the message also goes to all their 33 member countries very effectively and to you know summarize it i am very happy that you had a wonderful presentation talk and also given a way forward as to how to go about it and it is it's disturbing to you know you know ha, you know listen to your statement that the government of india or the state governments of india you no know, they even though they promote israel technology 
but what is wrong in promoting you know you know uh, you know you know indian solutions indian startups and uh, you know it is very important and you know you know you know grow 10 you know it is it is it is it is, it is, it is, it is a grow tons and tons and tons that is the message which i am uh, having it even though i i didn't i didn't understand your meaning of grow and how you are able to have that acronym but for me grow in tons and tons and tons that is more important but it's a beautiful technology science and technology brain for agriculture and and i would like to request you that you know we will we should have a collaboration between the university and the doubling farmers income seven mission mode programs let us have that how farm again technology can facilitate operationalization of the seven mission mode programs of digital technology in agriculture as proposed by the doubling farmers income uh, by 2022 committee and let us undertake pilot projects so Second. that uh, so that government listens to this practice you know projects it's very important and thank you very much and uh, your impact and uh, uh, you know the the you know the outcome of your uh, you know uh, pilot project i was seeing the videos you know that you know the you know the coconut tree plantations or the tomato and then you know for, for mr vihas you know oral you know talk and gives more confidence that you know it is a trustworthy technology impactful technology and you know and it is it is a latest technology which the you know person like you are able to bring it from again and it is very important and you know that that's why this you know was you know university based on this discussion we are generating lot of value chain commodity value chain working groups so that they work on it and we also generate policy paper we also publish a paper out of a research paper based on this discussion in various journals so that they understand they pick it up many students would like to come and undertake research projects based on this uh, you know you know uh, uh, you know uh, talk which you had it and it is a very important talk i would like to, i would like to hear from you mr benjamin and then i will close the webinar over to you mr benjamin yeah thank you thank you so much uh, professor i think this was a great opportunity Uh, to be able to interact with uh, uh, people across the world and uh, uh, i mean give may, maybe create a spark and like i had uh, mentioned in my way forward plan uh, it definitely requires a lot of interaction uh, between us and institutions of the government and uh, to your invitation of uh, we joining hands with shobit i'll be more than glad to do that and uh, take the message forward and uh, really thank you for inviting and i will be more than happy to be associated with uh, the university and you uh, going forward in the future to uh, really create an impact so it is very important that we have to generate lot of people we we'll should train them on farm again technology and as a certified professionals to take the farm again technology to the rural areas so we have to have a certified professionals so this is also very important that you know center of excellence of the soviet institute of engineering and technology dimitri university and the farm again you know join together generate certification program maybe two months three months and then also part of the you know you know mtech btech and bg diploma agricultural informatics program so that the students you know how when you know unix was developed operating systems you know unix you know got its importance and propagation through the students you know and when they become you know ceos they promoted unix very much the same methodology we should adopt now that's how the gen next can be motivated technology explosion and nobody is going to stop now technology will evolve it is up to as to how to utilize it and both the faculty you know researchers faculty members teachers and the students have to always walk, run 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 to understand technology which gets developed and also part of the technology development india being in you know it's a very big you know is a very important country 
with more than 1000 you know 500 universities and as far as the con you know technology development products algorithms you know is very important and this is an important thing and i'm very happy that today it is even though it is is meant for 1 hour 30 minutes today it is it's it's, it's on live telecast with 2 hours 5 minutes oh, and okay. thank you very much and uh, with this i would like to thank all the participants those are from abroad and uh, you know uh, and india watching over this international webinar series on very important topic agronomy plus artificial intelligence leading to precision farming precision agriculture and uh, i also thank mr vigas who was able to talk from uh, you know mysore and because of his bandwidth problems that he was not able to show his video you know his face but he was able to talk in audio and mr benjamin raja we got benefited out of your talk and we will kind of, we will you know uh, you know work together through through you know, through institutional collaboration with this i would like to thank honorable chancellor of the university his excellency secretary general ardo and all the participants of the of this program and faculty members of this program and above all mr manish chabra who is a man who is conducting the program behind the scene thank you very much and have a nice day with this i close the webinar and leave studio thank you very much thank you